Hello everyone, and welcome back to Assassin's Creed 2. Last episode, we got to, uh... I believe this is Tuscany. Um, some of you are probably wondering why I bothered to get that, uh, viewpoint. Well, short answer is, I don't know if we'll, we'll ever be back here, so I'm just gonna... I just got the viewpoint, just to be sure I got everything. Wait, let's do it. Alright. So we're after the, uh, Vieri de Pazzi. Uh, both me and, uh... Me, Mar some of Mario's men, as well as Mario and his men that are apparently in, in front of us, or ahead of us. Ezio, your uncle's under attack and needs help. Go to him. Also, his lips were not moving. Just saying. <laughs> However, there is apparently a fight going on. I'm going to start. Come on. Should be pretty easy. A lot of them are uh, previously occupied. Boom. 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 Picking them off one by one. That's an assassin's job. Ah, the boat. There you are. It seems my plan is to come to the attack. Yeah, men ambush. Now we've got our happy one. Even brothers and I will deal with these guys. I want you to go on ahead and boot out that thing. See that justice is done. You sure? Because I'm, I'm really getting rid of a lot of these guys. You got like a surplus of men for people who feel like they're not ever going to attack you. <laughs> okay, I guess uh, guess my job here is done for now. So off to Vieti, I believe. Like I said last episode, we should get around to killing him this episode. And uh, some of you are probably wondering, uh, especially if you missed last episode, which you really shouldn't have. <laughs> if you missed last episode, go back and watch it. Seriously, why, why are you even watching this episode? Anyway, um, some of you are probably wondering why we're going after, Vi after Vieri. To this point, he's only, only been a nuisance. But uh, his entire family, including his father Francesco de Pazzi, are uh, Templars. Uh, the entire mechanic of Templars versus Assassins was uh, introduced last episode. Uh, or, not introduced, explained, more or less. Um, more or less, uh, Templars want to control everything. Assassins want uh, everyone to be free in their own right, and uh, that's why we're here. Uh, the entire Depotsi family, as, as is known, is... Uh, are Templars, so we're here to kill them and keep them from taking control of everything. Now, I'm going to shut up talking, or stop talking, and uh, actually get on with this cutscene. It's settled. Vieri, you will remain here to coordinate the mercenary. Francesco will organize our forces in the city and send word when it's time to strike. Jacopo, your job is to calm the citizens once the deed is done. What of that Ubriacone Mario? He continues to harass my forces, and I fear he'll discover what we intend. He's always been trouble, just like that bastardo brother of his. Then let me reunite them, father. There will be plenty of time to clean up the refute when we're finished. Now, is there anything else? Muy bien. May the Father of Understanding guide you. May, May the, the Father, Father of, of understanding, understanding guide you. Comandante! Comandante! What? Mario Auditore has invaded the city. He comes for you. <laughs> then let's not keep him waiting. Alright, so we got a little war going on. Assassinate Vieri de Pazzi, which is over there. So, I'm just gonna run over there then. Jump over here, grab this, drop down, so we don't hurt ourselves. Because <laughs> hurting ourselves would be bad at this point. Because we do not have very much health. Hi, how you doing? Damn! Oh my god, there's. Oh, they're down there. Okay. I was to say, there's so many people trying to kill me alone. Because I saw all the arrows on screen, I was like, oh crap. <laughs> but. Apparently they're not all here to kill just me. Hi! BAM! That was easy enough. What are you and your allies planning? 
Is this what my father discovered? Is this why he was killed? I'm sorry. Were you hoping for a confession? Pezzo di merda! Vorrei solo che avessi sofferto di più! Hai avuto le fine che meritavi! Spero che è brutto! Enough, Ezio! Show some respect. Respect? After all that's happened, do you think he would have shown either of us such kindness? You are not Fieri. Do not become him. Hmm. Che la morte ti dia le pace che cercavi. Requiesca in pace. Take this. Read it when you have the time. Our work here is finished. Let us return to the villa. What goes around is completed. Pretty much uh, what that cutscene was about was uh, Mario teaching Etsy how to be a respectful assassin. Anyway, sequence three, I believe, is complete. I don't know, I didn't see the thingamajig. It's coming up soon. I don't know. Probably not. Moving on to the next area. It was either episode, uh, not episode, um, sequence three or sequence four that I just finished, but either way, we are back in Montana Joni. And, uh, this is going to be a sight to behold for, uh, a lot of this, uh, a lot of this game is something that you'll look forward to coming back to, quite honestly. But anyway, we got a cutscene. With Mario. And here he is, our campione Ezio. Oh, oh hey, hey Ezio. Ezio! I see you've wasted no time starting the celebration. And why not? You've done us a great service, Nipote. With Vieri dead. La Toscana will grow quiet once more. Do you know what that means? Basta lavorare. Si passa tutto il giorno a bere. E a puttane. What? It's true. <laughs> Come, it's you. Walk with me. Yes, uncle. They know how to throw a party. All right, a change of plans. Learn about the villa and discover the codex pages hidden, hidden there. All right. The Pazzi answer to another, a Spaniard. He is Rodrigo Borgia, one of the most powerful men in all of Europe, and leader of the Templar Order. Which makes him responsible for the murder of my father and brothers. Yes, and he will kill you too, given the chance. Then I must stand against him if I wish to be free. But not until every other Templar has fallen to my blade. Father's list will guide me. Where will you go next? Firenze. Francesco de Pazzi will share the fate of his son. A sensible next step. No doubt he intends evil for the city. All right. That's enough grim talk for one night. I'll be in my study if you need me. I shall read the letter my uncle gave me. Alright, so, uh... What we could do here is we could press the map button. Which we'll do. Mr. Francesco, I have done as requested and spoken with your son. I agree with your assessment, though only in part. Yes, Vieri is brash and prone to act without forethought. And he has a habit of treating the mercenary like playthings. I have received reports of at least three men being disfigured as a result. But I do not think him, as you put it, beyond repair. Rather, I believe the solution to be a simple matter. He seeks your approval, your attention. These outbursts of his are a result of insecurities born out of a sense of inadequacy. He speaks of you often and fondly and expresses a desire to be closer to you. So, if he is loud and foul and angry, I believe it is simply because he wants to be noticed. He wants to be loved. Act as you see fit on the information I've given you here. But I must ask that we end this correspondence. 
Were he to discover the nature of our conversations, I fear what might become of me. Yours in confidence, Fra Giocondo. Okay, so apparently that is from some, some sort of a uh, psychologist. I don't know who exactly that is. Maybe someone we kill later on? I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. Uh, I haven't played this game in quite some time, so I don't re recall g facing against a Goicondo. I believe that's how you say his name. Anyway, um, I'm going to keep try to keep those uh, letters down to a minimum as much as I possibly can. But uh, our next spot is back in Mario's study. Hey Mario, what you doing over here? Look familiar? On their codex pages. Yes. Your father managed to find and translate a few before he... Here. This is not your father's work. Someone else has translated it. Leonardo da Vinci, a friend. Do you see the way the words cross from one page to the next? There is something underneath it all. Some kind of map. Where is it supposed to lead? Your father and I managed to make out bits of a prophecy scrawled across these pages. It was written by an assassin like us, who long ago held a piece of Eden. His name was Altair. He spoke of something powerful and ancient hidden beneath the land. What is it? What indeed? Solving that little mystery is exactly why we collected these pages. Then let me help. It's time I take on my father's work. All of it. I start with the page I took from Bieri. Leonardo will decode it for us. Ben, return here when time permits, and we'll add it to the wall. All right. Reach the villa's viewpoint. Didn't I already do that? Oh well. <laughs> if we need to do it again, we need to do it again. Come on, Ezio. There you go. You can climb in. What is this like? It kind of reminds me of a, uh, a, a clock tower clock, but it's probably not. Probably, probably, because quite honestly, there's a, there's too much metal and intricate design in there to be really a clock. Anyway, I'm talking too much. Reach the villa viewpoint. Uh, here. So. <laughs> Even though I did this earlier in the uh, Let's Play, I have to do it again for uh, <laughs> story's sake. So yeah. I would call that backtracking, but I don't know I don't know if it's uh, actual backtracking. I guess I guess technically if you're doing the same thing more than once it's backtracking, but I don't know. There are uh, codex pages hidden across uh, Monterigione, and this is what we're this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. Uh, we just loot all these really tall chests for some reason. Oh, it's not the chests that are tall; it's the stand that holds. Okay. <laughs> I always thought they're just like really tall chests that had like large scrolls of paper in it or something. I don't know. Anyway, we got one codex page. I believe there are four, which <laughs> I really shouldn't have said believe because it's on the screen right now. It's one out of four. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we're off to our second one. Drop down. Over here. Hey, buddy. I just stole your money for no reason. Because honestly, I have, I have a good bit of money right now. Codex page two acquired. So, we got to find a third. I'm going to head over to the west side, or perhaps east, east side, I don't know, I don't know which side of, which, uh, which side of Monterigione we are on, or which side we are headed to, but either way, uh, from the gate I'm headed to the left side of the map, from the villa I guess it would be the right side, but... I don't think it shows the directions on the map either. It's just something interesting. Okay. Oh, here here is a, another collectible throughout the uh, 
throughout Mount Derijone little statues. I believe each of them to be a uh, statue of a Greek god, I believe? If I can... Yeah, Apollo. Okay, yeah, that's Greek. Uh, Greek mythology, uh, mythological statues. Uh, I don't believe Zeus is one of them, but I, I know... Uh, I want to say Aphrodite is one of them. I don't, I don't know, I don't know too awful much about Greek mythology, but I, I am a bit of a fan of it. I, I just like, I just like the narrative. Anyway, uh, where is the last one? All the way out here, of course. <laughs> All right, it's like riding a horse. Anyway, um, once we get each statue. Which I believe they're... No, it's a feather. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and grab the feather. It's funny, uh, in Assassin's Creed 1 you actually use feather feathers to uh, collect the uh, blood from your victim, thus marking their death. And then this one we're actually uh, collecting feathers to... Uh, To help out Maria, I believe. I, I believe was her name. Um, anyway, about the statues, um, I'm hopping around. Anyway, <laughs> I keep getting distracted. But uh, the statues, once we get all of them, there are uh, places behind the villa where we can put those statues and get some money on our hands. Uh, which I see another statue right here. Also, uh, I believe as you get near these. Uh, Near these statues, you hear a uh, tinkling sound. Well, tinkling. I don't know what what I don't know what kind of sound that, that would be. Because when I think of tink tinkle, I think of you know peeing. But whatever. <laughs> um, when you get those near those statues, you'll hear that sound. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, we'll be able to get some money on our hands, which we will be needing throughout the uh, game, because I do plan on uh, buying most, if not all, the shops that are available to us. Um, luckily, there is a rather easy way to uh, get money through Monterey Joni uh, by purchasing shops, then uh, getting uh, constant revenue from those shops uh, inside the villa itself. Anyway, I've done enough talking. Uh, <laughs> And we're finally to the last codex page. All right, whew! All right, back on the horse. Decoding. F okay. Change of plans is complete, and I believe we are heading back to the villa. Go check on Claudia. Okay, yeah. Here is where they they are explaining. Uh, going to explain how the cost of in income in Monteri Joni happens. And, uh, yeah, uh, though I've already, I've already kind of explained it, um, I would go into more detail how exactly we, uh, help out Monterey Joni as a whole. Um, can we ride a horse inside? No. Okay. So, from here on out, we're running. <laughs> Up the building at you. More or less, uh, nah, I'm just gonna let them... Let them explain it, because quite honestly, they're they're better at explaining it. If if I feel that they that it needs more explaining, I'll explain it then. Also, this insignia and this and this little uh, fountain right here are so nice. I want something like that in my my future mansion. <laughs> future mansion. <laughs> anyway, um, we got another feather, which is something. So we only have 98 problems left. <laughs> Hello, Claudia. Salute, Claudia. Our uncle is un mostro. This is outrageous. What's happened? He's making me work. If father was here, I'd never be stuck behind a desk like this. And what are the terms of this supposed enslavement? Since someone decided we're going to stay here, Zio Mario suggested we try and find the money to repair the villa. 
Problem is, there isn't any. I bet I can bring in some money. Oh, great. More work for me. Well, benissimo. If you start paying for improvements to the town, I'll keep track of them in this book. And since I have nothing better to do, I'll also make note of any objects you bring in from the outside. If you actually get this place up and running, travelers might visit and spend money. Although I doubt anyone will want to come this far out of the city. But if they do, I'll keep the money we make in this chest. You're going to have to show up to take it to the bank yourself. Because when it gets full, I'm just going to take the extra cash for myself. Capito? Dio. Alright, so uh, what Claudia is pretty much running is a ledger of, sor of sorts. Um, uh, equipment, collections, renovation, shops, uh, most of Monthly Journey itself. Also, the background is moving with my mouse. That's kind of cool. Uh, also, there is a ledger for the money, all that crap. Um, pretty much, uh, this is just a completionist thing. Uh, if you want to get all the armor, all the weapons, you're good on that. Uh, do all the renovations to the city, which we'll probably wind up doing. Um, collections, we're going to try to do all most of this. Um, I believe that portraits of its used targets, paintings. I believe there was something about the little uh, statues, but I don't don't call. Anyway, um, so the way we okay, the way we upgrade the city and thus bring in our own money is talking to this guy, the uh, tailor, not tailor, uh, architect. Buongiorno. Yeah. Is there something wrong? Yes, sir. Mario hired me to deal with this mess, but I'm an architetto, not a miracle worker. <laughs> Without money, I can't fix any of these buildings. And if someone brought you money? Eh, then we'd be in business. Uh, you must be Ser Ezio. Am I right? Uncle, I like this architetto. He gets very observant when he can smell money. If you want to fix up this town, <laughs> I'm going to need it. I have a price list here for new shops and renovations. Just bring me gold, make a choice, and I'll begin at once. If I build you a shop, you, as the landlord, can purchase goods there at lower rates. If you invest more money in the shop, you get an even greater discount. As for renovations, well, you'll be bringing the town and villa back to life. As Sir Mario tells me, that was very important to your great-great-grandfather. Plus, when you buy shops and renovations, you'll be increasing the number of people who visit, causing your income to increase. So, let's take a look, shall we? Alright, uh, so yeah, this is how we upgrade the... Um, the town. Uh, 4,000. I have 6,000 florins on me right now. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade a few things. Uh, art merchant. The bank. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Also want to save a little bit of money for myself so that, uh, I can get some armor and weapons later. But for right now, I believe that's it. So yeah, um, Buon viaggio. as the you gonna zoom me out? Okay. Um, as the game goes on, uh, we'll get money in this chest right here um, that we can't collect any right now because we don't have anything in there. Anyway, um, Monte Giorni's value is seven seventy-seven fifty. Um, so yeah, as the game goes on, a as we build, uh, renovate more buildings in Mount uh we get our own money, which uh, constantly increases uh, throughout the game. Anyway, after <laughs> explaining a major, major mechanic in the game, that is going to be it. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, if you've already done so, why did I pull up my sword? Why did I pull up my sword? Okay. Um, what was I saying? If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. Uh, if you like this video, press the like button down below. And until next episode, I'll see you all later.